Hi everyone and welcome to this new video tutorial. Today we are going to build a collaborative online whiteboard using React and Liveblocks. So let's jump into the code. You can find this tutorial on our website. I will put all the links that we need in the description. So open the React version and let's create our whiteboard. The first thing to do will be to create a new project using the npx create react app command passing the name of the project. After that, I'll have to install two packages. The first one will be Liveblocks client. It allows us to connect to the Liveblocks API and the second one will be Liveblocks React. This one is useful to use Liveblocks with React. It provides all the hooks that you need to implement your application. The application is started, let's get into the code. Open the index.js file. First, we'll have to import the create client function. This function allows us to create a new client to connect to Liveblocks. After that, we'll need the Liveblocks provider. The Liveblocks provider is an IRADER function which allows us to use Liveblocks on every element inside of the provider call. To make it work properly, you'll have to create a client calling create client function and pass the public API key. You can find this key in your dashboard. So let's open the dashboard and copy the key value, the public key value. Please note that we are on test environment to our public API key value. After that, we'll have to create the Liveblocks provider in our component and pass the client as a property. Next step will be to import the room provider. Room provider will be called under the Liveblocks provider and we have to pass an ID. In this case, it will be React Whiteboard-1. Don't forget to close the tag after the app tag. Next step, we'll have to scaffold the application. I invite you to copy the code from the tutorial. You will find the link in the description below and I will pass in fast forward all the application scaffolding. In order to summarize a bit what we've done here, we have two major components. The first one will be Canvas, which is rendering a div with a rectangle inside. And the second one will be rectangle, which will be all the forms that we will draw on our canvas. We also created a color array, a get random int function, and a get color uh, random function. These utilities function will be used to uh, create some rectangle with random colors. Have a look to the use map hook. This one allows us to create a CRGT map. Map is a data structure, as you know it, and uh, this one will be uh, config-free and replicated on LiveBlock servers, which means every user can share the data inside this map called shapes. Let's slow down for a few seconds. We will create a function called insert rectangle. Its goal will be to create a new rectangle on the whiteboard. For that, we will create a shape ID. So the shape ID will be the unique identifier of a specific shape and we will create a rectangle object that contains the position of the shape and the color of the shape. You have to remember that we've created a shapes map which will handle all the shapes of the whiteboard and we can after that call the shapes.set function to add the, our new shape in the shape list or the shape map if you prefer. Now that the app is almost scaffold, we just have to create the new toolbar which will be allowing us to create new rectangles and begin our application. Let's implement shape selections which means you can select a shape and every other user will see what you've just selected. For that, we'll use the use my presence hook. So I will extract 
selected shape from use my presence, which will be a value that we will create and set presence function. I will also need the others value from the use others hook. So after that, I will create a new handler function as uh, the insert rectangle one that we created earlier. And this one will be on shape pointer down, which means every time we click on a shape, we'll have to update the presence of the selected shape. This function will be passed as a parameters to the rectangles. Let's update our rectangle component. We'll now need the ID, on shape pointer down, and selection color. So let's add this value as props. Now we have to go back on our canvas element where the shapes are rendered. We'll create a selection color value, which will be calculated on the shape ID, and we'll have to detect if the shape is selected by other user using the others value, transform to an array, and using the sum function on it. This one allows us to check if there is any other users that have selected the specific shape that we are rendering. Now we just have to update the props of the rectangle component that we've just created earlier. We pass the shape ID and we'll also pass down the on shape pointer down function. We will also need the selection color with the variable with that we just created earlier. So let's open a new tab here, and here you can see that the selection is working. When I select a shape, the other windows shows the shape surrounded by a green border on the other side. The next step will be to implement the shape dragging. If you want to use a dashboard, we'll have to be able to move the shapes. For that, we'll use the use state hooks to create a new state variable. Its name will be is dragging. Let's go back on our on shape pointer down function. First thing will be to stop propagation of the event. After that, we can call set is dragging function to true. Next up will be to create a new function on canvas pointer up, which means every time you release the pointer, or the click if you want, and his goal will be to remove all the dragging variables by setting his dragging to false, and clear the selected shape values in the presence. Please note that the override object that you can send with set presence is up to you. You can put any value that you want and it will be uh, propagated with all the client in the same room. The next event that we'll implement is on canvas pointer move, which means every time you drag a shape, we'll have to update the position of the shape in the storage values. For that, we'll need to check if we are dragging a specific shape and then get the shape from the selected shape um, state variable. <coughs> and if the shape is defined, we'll update using the set method on, on our shapes live map. The set function takes as a parameter the uh, object that we want to update and we pass also the properties that we want to update. So in this case, it will be a spread of our shape and we will update X and Y position. The minus 50 is to center the cursor inside of the shape. Now we can add our function on the canvas div. On pointer move with on canvas pointer move and on pointer up with on canvas pointer up. Now we can drag the shape on the whiteboard 
and as you can see the selection is working and everything is working in real time thanks to LiveBlocks API. We can also create new rectangles and everything is synchronized. The next step will be to create undo and redo buttons. Using LiveBlocks storage feature you can implement undo and redo button in just a few lines of code. So first of all, we need to create a new history variable with the use history hook. After that, we'll add an option on our set presence calls to make sure that every presence update is persisted on the history. So the option will be add to history to true. And this one it will be very useful, which means every time we select a shape, it will be added on the history. Next, we'll create two new buttons on our application toolbar. And we just have to pass on the onClick event history.undo and history.redo. Just four lines of code to implement undo redo in the multiplayer context, but we will get back to it just after. So I will clear my room's data because uh, all the shapes that we've created were created without history and doing this will start with fresh new data. So the room is cleared and now you can see that I can create rectangle and undo all my changes and everything is synchronized. We'll see after that that uh, we are implementing what we've called multiplayer undo redo, which means when you redo some changes, if the state of the global application has been modified by another user, you will undo only the changes that you just pushed, which means the next state after a redo or undo may be different because you only are updating a subset of the data. Don't forget that you can see all the data that you've stored on the storage using the dashboard. So let's try again and I will show you how multiplayer undo redo works. So I just moved a shape and I will try to move a shape on the down window. When I call the undo, as you can see, it is moving slowly, but only the changes that I've made on my side, which is really important. You probably noticed that when I call redo, the move of my shape is way too short, which means we've triggered too many presences update when dragging the shape. To avoid this um, behavior, we can pause the history while dragging the shape and resume the history once we release our mouse click. We'll implement that later. So to prevent too many histories values, on the on shape pointer down event, we'll pause the history calling history.pause. On the canvas pointer up, we will call the method, the function history.resume. With this improvement, you can see that I can drag a shape, click on the undo button, and the shape will be on the previous position. If I click here on rectangle, I drag the shape, I call the undo, and please note that when I call the undo on the other window, it is changing only my changes. I forgot to implement the delete button on the toolbar, so let's create a delete rectangle function. The function will be pretty simple. It will use the shapes value and call the delete method passing the selected shape as a parameter and it will set the presence to null, which means if the selected shape is deleted, 
you will remove it from the presence. And the other thing we have to do is to pass this delete rectangle function as a parameter on the on click uh, delete button that we will create in our toolbar. Now I can create rectangle and delete them. The next issue that we'll have is that when creating a rectangle and selecting it by default, we are creating two history records. There is a hook, which is named uh, use batch, that can prevent this behavior, which means we can batch every changes that we want in one history record. So let's use the use batch react hook and extract the batch function. This function will be called on the insert rectangle, for example, and we'll move the code inside of it, inside a callback function. We can also add our set presence call inside of the insert rectangle, which means we can select the rectangle when we are creating it. And voila, with this code example, you have a dedicated. And voila, we have uh, all the basis for developing a real-time collaborative whiteboard with moving shapes. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I see you in the next one. Bye.